welcome to get that code. The second video in my Git series. In this video, we're gonna talk about the popular remote servers, GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket, and how to get your code from that server. So before we get started, if you missed the first video, then make sure hit the link up in one of the corners. I don't know which one, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Well, I'm gonna be completely wrong, but hit that link there and um, you'll be taken to the first series where I talk about initializing a repo and the basic workflow. So now with that being said, let's hop right in. The first thing I wanna talk about are remote server options. There are three Git server options that you probably have heard about. Um, they're the most popular ones. There's always more and you could also roll your own if you really want to like build your own, but that's really building your own is really outside the scope of this like Git series. So we're just going to leave it with, with these options here. So here are those three options I was talking about. They're all, they are, they all have a free tier of some sort. Of course they want you to pay at some point, but they all have a free tier. They're all really good. Those are GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket. These are just the most popular, like I said, but like I said, there's always more. Um, and they also each have their own pluses and minuses. But here are some general features that each offer on their free tier. Uh, the first one is obviously being able to store your code, um, whether it's in a public repo or a private repo. And when I say repo, I mean repository where you actually store your code. Um, they each have free unlimited private repos, which is really nice if you don't want people to see. Um, or, and they also have free public repos as well. Um, again, repos are where the code lives. They also each offer some kind of issue tracking. Bitbucket, I think is the most limited from what I've read briefly and used briefly because they want you to integrate it with Jira, um, which is just its own issue tracker, standalone product. Then, uh, GitLab and GitHub each have their own issue trackers also. GitLabs is a little bit more, more expensive, which we'll get to a little bit more. And then you also have the fact that there is a wiki per repo in each. So you can have a wiki style document in each of them. Now here's what each is mainly known for. You have GitHub, which is pretty well known for open source software. So what I mean by that is a lot of open source software is really stored on GitHub whether that's like by design or a lot of people just gravitated to GitHub. It's free. It's easy to navigate. You can find things pretty easily there. So you can actually find things pretty easily here. Here's the homepage whenever I'm signed in. Um, you can just search for what you need, all that kind of stuff. They have different repos here for you to search. It's, it's pretty nifty. That's GitHub. Then you also have GitLab. So GitLab contains more Git, uh, DevOps options like continuous integration and more access levels, which is pretty nifty in their issue tracking. Um, if you wanted to have like a private, a private code repo, but public issues, then you can actually do that in GitLab on their free tier also. So here's GitLab. Um, they really pride themselves on DevOps platforms, all that kind of stuff here. Um, they say get free trial, but if you go to pricing, you can see there's actually quite a bit here. So now, the final one is Bitbucket. Bitbucket. Um, Bitbucket has unlimited private repos as well and integrates very well with Jira and other Atlassian software if you need to. So you can link commits and all that kind of stuff. You can also link commits from any of the other two to Jira. It's all possible. You'll kind of see that through the workflow because you'll see there's a Jira option on mine. I use it from one of my projects and just integrated it all through GitHub. Um, but you definitely don't need Jira to get started with any of this. Nor do you actually need Bitbucket. You can choose GitLab or GitHub, um, but let's go check it out. Like we have all the others, just to give an overview. So here's Bitbucket. Um, it's more than just code management. So you get code management. Um, it's a good place for teams, all that kind of stuff. You get Jira, Trello integration, continuous delivery. They all like this continuous delivery. Um, free unlimited private repos where you start paying is if you have more people than just you that you want on the software. In this video, I'm gonna be using GitHub. Mainly it's because what I use, but also 
because it's very popular out there. It's pretty easy to get started and it's probably the most well-known one. So let's hop into that. Even though I'm using GitHub, it's also going to be relatively the same on all three platforms, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. I don't have an account with Bitbucket. I could go make one for free. I just haven't. Um, GitLab I've used here and there, but I always come back to GitHub. It's just familiarity, that kind of stuff. Like I said, it's going to be the exact, it's going to be pretty similar. You might have a little bit different, like where the new button type things, but it's gonna be pretty similar. Now that we know where to store our code, let's talk about getting our code from our local machine up to the repo, up to the Git server. And we do that through what's called a command, a push command. So we push our code to the server, which is basically like, uploading our code into Dropbox or something like that, but we actually just push it up to the server. Um, so what I wanted to start doing, what I what I like to do is start with the repo on your on the server of choice. Um, for me, that like I said, that is GitHub. I'd start a blank repo there and then get that repo onto my computer and just start from there. But in the last video, again, link up here somewhere. In the last video, I walked through making a Git repo locally. So let's just get that repo onto GitHub because sometimes there are cases where you start the project on your computer and then you push it up to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. I'm gonna say GitHub from here on out. So if I just say GitHub, know that I mean all three. This is all Git in the end. So it's all gonna be relatively the same. So the first thing I need to do is make a blank repository. This repo is going to be where the code will be stored. So first we're gonna open our browser choice. For me, that's Firefox. And then we're gonna to navigate to our server. So we're in GitHub already, github.com. Great, it's easy. The first thing I need to do is start with a blank repo in GitHub. This repo is gonna be where all the code is stored. So here we go. Opened up Firefox, opened up github.com signed in all that all that jazz so now i need to actually create the new repository um so once you're signed in right here where it says repositories we hit new i hit new and then i give it a name um the name i'm gonna call it um get video series when you're giving your repo a name do know you can't really use spaces um and you can see here where it says your new repo will be created as git video series dash SSS instead of space that space SSS, um, just spaces aren't allowed. So it's good either to do camel cases, hyphens, underscores, all that stuff is fine. Um, we'll just do, and I like to do lowercase and with hyphens. So get video series is what we're going to call it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it public so you guys can actually go to github.com slash Megan Wilson slash get video series and see it up here. Um, I'm gonna leave all these boxes unchecked. That way we just have a nice clean repo we can push to. This is that Jira software that gets checked automatically. That way if I make a Jira project, I can link it. Um, again, this won't be there if you don't have Jira hooked up. And then hit create repo or create repository. Now, this is the remote repo that needs to be added to our local repo. GitHub gives us some handy quick setup, which is what we are going to follow. Uh, so now then these steps are all on our local machine here. So on our local machine, we have the ability to, to, we need to open up the terminal, just like I did here, and then go and change into where that folder or directory of wherever the code is that you want to push up into this repo. For me, that's going to be in the developer slash git dash video dash series. If your folder doesn't match the GitHub repo name, that's totally fine. It'll be okay. It'll still get added, I promise. So here we go. CD developer. All right, so now that we're inside this working folder, the next thing we need to do is add a remote URL to the local Git repository. This URL is going to be where we push to. And so that can be gotten from the GitHub repo. I mean, yeah, from the GitHub right here where it says Git remote add origin. And then this Git add github.com series, uh, github.com and all this stuff here. This here, Git remote add origin, Git add github.com, Megan Wilson slash whatever. That is the remote URL that Git is going to use to push our code 
up to the server. So this is basically just directing where the code should go. The reason why it doesn't look like a normal URL is because it's using SSH um, to actually authenticate so my local machine to my Git account. So I'm gonna put some links. I'm not really gonna go over that right now, but I'm gonna put some links in the description that talk about authenticating SSH with GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. So just go down in the description and you can find those there. You can also hit the like button while you're down there and give this video a like if you're finding it useful. All right, so now that we have this URL, we're gonna go ahead and just copy the git at github.com. We're gonna get that copied, so Command C. And then we're gonna go back into our terminal here. And now what we're gonna do is say git remote add origin. The origin is where is it stored? Where is the original place? Well, that's gonna be github at github.com, Megan Wilson slash git video series. And then we hit enter. There's no confirmation or anything that it's actually been added, but it's there, I promise. And now we need to actually create the branch locally, the main branch. One was already made on the server. We actually need to make it here locally now. If you don't know what the branch term is, don't worry. I'm gonna talk about it in the next video and you can catch that next video on the same channel. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified. All we need to do here is type in git branch dash M main. That's gonna mer merge our main our git code into the main branch which again, we hit enter, everything's fine and dandy. Then we actually need to push it to the server. This is where things get really easy. So now we're gonna say git push dash u origin main. So basically all we're saying is git push here and saying, hey, add this info into the server. And then origin main is saying, hey, we're making this also our main branch. This is where we're working from. So now if I hit enter, we're gonna say what was added. Basically it's done. And we can see that we actually made a new branch main, added it to main, and it's on github.com. And so now if we go to github.com, we can actually see it there. So the basic steps in a Git workflow, they are initializing, creating or modifying files, adding those files or folders to the staging area, and then committing those files to Git, and then finally pushing them up to the server. So let's make some changes Let's get this committed and let's push those up to the server here. So we have this file. This is that same index.html file we were working on in the initialize video. I'm just gonna make another change. So now we have the second change here and we're gonna go to the terminal and commit it into, and add this and then commit it and then push it. Git add index.html because we have to tell it what we exactly want to get added. And then we need to make a message. So git commit dash M so that it gets logged. And now we get to actually push it. So whenever you go to push the code again, you hit git push, enter, and it gets pushed up. And that's all it is. And now if we were to go into GitHub, now when we go into GitHub and we get Firefox a refresh, we'll see that there was another paragraph added 14 seconds ago. This makes it just super easy, super quick and you can actually go and see what your commits are now, which is pretty nifty. Now those are the, then you just keep repeating those steps and you're you're basically working with Git at this point. Um, how often should you push? Well, that's really, really dependent on how often do you want your code actually stored up in the repo. I like to push as often as possible, depending on my project. Just because if something were to happen, where if this repo got deleted off my computer or I happen to buy a new computer and I need this repo, then I can pull it down and I can get it onto my local machine where all the changes have been stored, which is super nice. Now let's talk about actually cloning, pulling, getting those repos from the server onto our computer, onto our local machine, because that's a little bit different. Well, there's two really main commands for that. And that is git pull, and git clone. Each are used in different scenarios. So the first one, git clone is mainly used to get a repository from a server onto your local machine that does not exist. So if I wanted to get a repo that I just haven't worked on in a long time for my GitHub, that's when I would use git clone because it's probably not on my machine. Or if I got a new computer, I would use git clone to get to get my info to get my repo from GitHub 
onto my new computer. Then there's git pull. Git pull is mainly used to get changes that are on the remote server and you can find and pull them down to your server to your local repo that already exists. So this is something that you usually use if you're in a team or if you make changes in in the online whatever or you have multiple computers and you just jump between like a laptop and a desktop. Then you'll use like git pull to actually get that info between the two computers. Um, and the remote server. So you push it from the from the desktop, it goes up to GitHub, you pull it down from on your laptop, basically. So let's walk through examples of each. The first one I wanna do is cloning a repo. Um, so the first one we're gonna actually clone is a really old repo that I have, and it's called Hello World JS. And right here where it says code, we can hit this drop down again, just copy here, we want this URL, and we're gonna go back into our terminal app. All right, so now that I have that URL, I'm inside the terminal app. The next thing I really need to do at this point is going to be to do a clone. So, so wherever you want this folder of code to live, you wanna be inside that enclosing folder. So for me, I like to keep all my stuff in my developer folder. So right now I am inside my developer. So now we're going to do this, we're gonna hit git clone and then you paste that url uh, git at github.com slash megan wilson slash hello world dot js now i hit enter and it's cloning and now we have this folder hello world dash js and how i know we have this folder is when i hit ls to list off my directory items here it is hello world dash js so that's how you can clone a repo just git clone do all that jazz, it'll get down, and then you can start making changes, opening it in your text editors, your IDEs, whatever you need to. That's how you get it cloned. So now let's talk about pooling. So pooling, so like I said, pooling can only happen when there are changes on the server that you actually need to get locally to you. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm just gonna make some changes on github.com in my iHog repo. All right, so inside Firefox here, I have my iHog board repo up here. We're just gonna make some changes to the readme and then we're gonna open that and then we're gonna pull that those changes down into my local repo, into my local repo. Um, I'm just gonna hit the edit button. If we can actually add here and then basically we commit exactly like we did. It just pushes locally though, as soon as we hit that push button. So now we have a change here that doesn't exist on my repo. So what we need to do is go into the terminal app again and pull down those changes, which once you're already inside that folder, all you have to do is say git pull, hit enter, and it's gonna pull down those changes. And we can see here that there is actually one file change with two insertions, and we can see what file that was when we changed it. And that's really all there is to pulling. So you just run git pull and then, and then it comes down. And that's really it for getting your your code from the server, what kind of servers there are and all that jazz. That's a very, very basic overview of using a remote server and how to pull and clone code as you need to. In the next video, like I said, I'm going to cover branches and you know, not the outside tree kind. We'll be talking about Git branches and how to work with that workflow and stuff like that. So if you found this video useful, then please make sure to hit the like button Make sure to hit subscribe so you get so you get the next video that comes out and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.